Okay, we, we noted in the prior video that it was a bit difficult to calculate the response or the uh, driving point resistance for the CGD capacitor. And we're going to expressly look at the CGD capacitor and the CMU capacitor for inverting gain stages and something that we can do to simplify the analysis. So for inverting gain stages, which expressly for us means the common emitter or the common source CS stages, we have this capacitor CGD and the common source stages or CMU and the common emitter stages that is relatively difficult to analyze. Now, we know that we call these capacitors CGD or CMU that go around inverting gain stages Miller capacitances. So here I've drawn a simplified circuit that shows a capacitor going around an inverting gain stage. Now, let's find the input capacitance looking into this. In order to do so, we're going to put a test voltage source, Vx, measure the test current, Ix, flowing into the circuit. We can find Cn. Now, we know that V out is equal to minus A times V in. And we also know that Vn is equal to Vx, our test voltage source. So we can write an expression Ix is equal to Vx minus V out over Zc. We can simplify this. The impedance of a capacitor is equal to 1 over Sc. And ultimately, we can now find Vx over Ix. So interestingly, this looks like the impedance of a capacitor, but it looks like one that has 1 plus A times bigger than just the capacitor by itself. So by wrapping the capacitor around the inverting amplifier, we've made the capacitor look like it's much bigger than just the capacitor by itself. In fact, bigger by, a, by the, the factor of the gain of the amplifier. When we see the Miller capacitor, we can break the capacitance and hang some of the capacitance at the input and some at the output. So we hang the input capacitance at the input. And we just found that the input capacitance was equal to 1 plus A times C. This is what we call an equivalent circuit. All right, next, let's go to the output. All right, here we want to do the same analysis. We want to find the output capacitance looking this direction, C out. To do so, of course, we're going to put a test voltage source in, and we're going to measure the current Ix that flows into that voltage source. Now, we know explicitly, because of the voltage amplification, that Vi is equal to minus Vx over A, the gain factor. And again, we can use KCL at the output node. And now we can write our expression for the resistance, Vx over Ix, or the impedance, Vx over Ix is equal to one over 1 plus 1 over A times SC. So again, this capacitance looks bigger than just C by itself. In fact, it looks like it's 1 plus 1 over A times bigger than C by itself. So we can complete our equivalent circuit model. Here we're going to add a capacitor to the output node. It's equal to 1 plus 1 over A times C. 
So whenever we see a Miller capacitance, we can break the capacitor that goes around the gain and add a capacitor that's equal to one plus A times the capacitance at the input and a capacitor that's equal to one plus one over A times the capacitance at the output. And this is going to greatly simplify the analysis. We won't have to use the small signal model any longer. Now it's worth noting if A is much, much bigger than one, then one plus one over A is approximately equal to one. So at the output, at least, if the gain is very large, the capacitance is pretty close to the value of the uh, extrinsic capacitor value. Now, the Miller capacitor also leads to a right half plane zero. And we are not analyzing it here, but we do need to know that we'll have to take care of this a little bit later. Now, one final point that I'd like to make in terms of open circuit time constant analysis. If capacitors are in parallel, then we can combine them before finding the time constant. So it behooves us to try and use techniques like this Miller capacitance technique first to see if we can combine some of the capacitors in our circuit in parallel to make the analysis a little bit simpler. Of course, this makes sense. If the capacitors are in parallel, then effectively we're going to find a time constant for one uh, capacitor and then find the, the time constant for the other capacitor and then sum them, uh, which is ultimately the same operation as just combining them in parallel before finding the time constant. All right, with that, we'll go ahead and stop for uh, this uh, particular lecture and we will pick it up next time with short circuit time constant analysis.